Hi, Phil Hinkle here for Event DV Magazine. The tutorial you're about to view is on one of the new features released in the most recent version of EDIUS, version 6. It's called the Mask Filter and allows you to do lots of new and creative things within the application. Hope you enjoy the tutorial and I hope you learn a lot. In today's tutorial, we're going to cover the new Mask Filter found in EDIUS version 6. The new mass filter opens up a whole new world of creative options, allowing you to do work right on the timeline that you used to have to take outside of EDIUS into a third party app, then re-import those files. And you know, that takes a little time and time is money. So this will help you work more efficiently for those types of creative flares that you need to add to your productions. First thing I'm going to do is I've got three clips lined up here on the timeline because I'm going to show you three different ways to use the mass filter. First one I'm going to use is this wide drummer clip. As you can see, it's just some shots of drummers doing their thing. It's a pretty nice little shot, but if you look at our cement here, we've got some either wear patterns or stains, or my guess is it looks sort of cloudy there, so it's probably some water stains from a recent rain that has not completely dried up yet. We can fix that with our mask filter. To do so, we're going to click on the effects palette, grab our mask filter, and drop it down onto the drummer's clip. Now, there's two ways we can open up the dialog box. We can either select the open dialog or we can double click on the mass filter. And here we have the new look of the mass filter. The old region filter we had before, we had a rectangle, we had a circle, it's all we got to play with. Now we have a whole new world of possibilities, most of them made possible by this little arrow right here called a draw path tool. You can either select the P key or I'm going to click on the draw path. What I'm going to do now is just like you do in other compositing apps, I'm just going to add a bunch of vertices to my clip here um, and create a mask around these guys. I'm not going to worry too much about keeping it a nice, tight, clean mask and keep it right on the edges because what we're going to do inside of our mask filter is we're going to isolate that color of the stained cement and then um, we're going to use another filter inside of the mask to clean up that stain. So it doesn't have to be an absolute perfect mask as you can see. I'm going to leave you alone here because you don't really want to watch me click and make all of these different vertices all the way around the thing. So I'll join you back here in just a moment. And we're almost done here. I'm just putting the finishing touches on my mask, creating the last few vertices that I need. And there we have our mask filter. Now, as you can see, there's a few of these points in here that maybe I could have done a little bit better, maybe a little bit cleaner. There's now ways that we can edit those points. If we come up here and click on this drop down, we can either select the object, which is the mode we're in right now. We can edit the shape, we can add a vertex, delete a vertex, or we can edit a control point. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do edit shape or press the A key. And I remember I put a bad one here, and I think there's a bad one there and I remember this one here was pretty bad too. Now if you need to zoom in and really look at what you've got, you can, down here there's two little buttons. If you click on the one that's all white, it's a preview. Hit F11 or press that button and now you get full screen. We don't have any of the keyframes on the bottom. We just have a bigger version of what we've masked out. Now, I see a few more problems in here. Now that I've done that, I'm going to drag this down to the pavement line. I'm going to drag this one back in because I think I could have just done a little bit better job. Now that I've got all that stuff done, it looks pretty good. I'm going to press the F9 key to get me back to my original screen so I can work on it some more. As you can see now, we've masked out the cement around these guys in the background. What we want to do is take these dark splotches out. Inside the mask, we can apply a filter. Or outside the mask, we can apply a filter or we can apply opacity to either one. We want to deal with the inside of our mask. So I'm going to click on my filter checkbox, come over, click on my select filter button, I'm going to go down and open my video filters and scroll down till I see chrominance. Chrominance is a filter within EDIUS that allows you to isolate colors amongst other things, but I use it mostly to isolate colors and change things or clean particular spots up like what we're doing here. Now if I take and click on my setup filter button here for the chrominance, I now get my chrominance filter and whatever we do is going to act on the inside of our mask. First thing I'm going to tell you to do is click the show key. As you can see over here on my display, everything inside that mask is black. Anything that's white is considered the 
inside of our chrominance filter. Anything black is the outside of our chrominance filter. Obviously, we need to fix some stuff up because right now it's all black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. This is our worst spot right here. It's really dark, and I'm going to double click on that water spot. That looks pretty good, actually. And now if I come over here to my color and luminance, I can start messing around with some of the settings on it. And I can take my base, which is what I clicked on, and I can grow how strong or how weak my selection is. And I can take the range of how much it bleeds over into neighboring colors. This actually looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to turn off my show key. And now I'm going to come back over to the effects tab of my chrominance filter. And remember, we want to touch whatever was white, which are these hot spots or these dirty spots. So we're going to go into our inside filter. And I'm going to scroll down. I remember it's way down here on the bottom somewhere to my color balance filter. It must be up here. There it is. Click on my color balance filter, open up the setups for that, and I'm going to drop my chroma down a little bit so if any colors were there, they're going to get dropped. I'm going to drop my contrast down a little. As you can see up here on my display, it's getting a little bit cleaner. See those spots kind of are blending in. I'm going to brighten that up a little bit, drop my contrast a little bit more. And as you can see, we've really done a pretty respectable job of cleaning up that cement. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to click OK on my chrominance filter. And there we have it. We have cleaned up our cement up here. Look how much better it looks now. I'm going to click OK on my mask filter. And now up here, this is the after shot. This is the before. Look how much better that looks. And it's a little bit cleaner. Now if you have a real-time output monitor set up on your computer, when you scrub the timeline or play the timeline, you'll be seeing all of this played back on your giant monitor your HD television in full resolution and we haven't had to render a thing. For our next example with the matte filter we're going to actually take this shot of the drums and we're going to make the wood change color. To do so again we're going to come back up find our mask filter drop it on top of the shot and we double click on our mask filter and here's our information setup screen again. Now let me show you a couple tricks. If we come down here, we've got two buttons. One is our normal view, which we see now, and one is our F11, or our preview. What it does is it gets rid of all the options for the mass filter, except our buttons across the top, and allows us to see more of our footage so we can more precisely set our mask vertex points. Now, if we want to zoom in, all we got to do is hold down our control key and turn the mouse wheel. We can zoom in and out real easy, or we can come up here and use our drop down. I've grown accustomed to using the wheel and the mouse, so I'm going to use that way for our examples. Another thing is if we were zoomed in and say we needed to work on a section off the screen, we can use the hand button up here, the pan tool, or we can just select H for hand, and we can slide it back and forth to get to where we need to be. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit, get it filling my screen up again. And I'm going to come back up and select our Draw Path tool, just like we did before. And I'm going to start drawing a mask around the wood of the drums. We're going to isolate the wood from the drum heads. And when we come around some of these corners, I'm going to show you real quick here. I'm going to exaggerate a little. If I hold down the left mouse key and pull with my mouse, you can see we can create a curved bezier line just like in other compositing apps. To get rid of a point you don't like just right click on it and you'll go back into your normal mode. So I'm going to continue using all options at my disposal to fill out the mask around the wood for these drums. You don't need to see me set all of these different mask points and vertex points so I'm going to leave you now and have you join back up with me when I get it all done. As you can see, I now have my mask created. If I needed to, I could come back up and use these options again like we did before to clean up the vertex points on our mask and make it a little bit finer detail if we needed to. We could clean this one up a bit, but for the example we've got, we're just going to move on and show you how to make the colors change. I'm going to come back down here and turn my preview off and go back to normal mode so I can see the options for my mask filter. And now, remember, we want to work on the inside, so I'm going to come up to my inside filter. I'm going to click on my Select Filter button. I'm going to come down and click on the Video Filters, 
pick my color wheel out of the color correction filters and click OK. Now I'm going to do my setup filter option. First thing I want to do is I want to set some keyframes so we can make this change colors. So I turn on my checkbox and set my keyframes. I'm going to start it. As you can see, the colors are changing. I'm going to start it around here on the, the turquoise. That looks kind of cool. I'm going to drag my timeline cursor to the end of the file, end of the clip, and I'm going to drag it back around and make it change some colors. That looks kind of good. And we've got our keyframe automatically set. I'm going to click OK. That's pretty much all we need to do. One other thing we can do if we want is click on the soft checkbox again and put a pixel width there. I'm going to put about five this time just to give it a little bit of a soft border where things may conflict. I'm going to click OK. And now if we scrub our timeline, you will see the drums change in colors. How cool is that? Now remember, if you have a... Con Now if I come over here and scrub my timeline, you will see the drums change in colors. How cool is that? Now remember, if you have a Grass Valley real-time input-output card, you'll be able to see this displayed in full resolution on your output external monitor. And we haven't had to render one thing in our work yet, have we? For the final portion of today's tutorial on the mass filter, I'm going to take the drums in this shot to close up and I'm going to make an opaque mask that floats and changes shapes over this wide shot I've got up here. To do so, I'm going to turn on my upper track so you can see it. I'm going to go to my mask filter, of course, and drop it down on my top clip and double click on the mask filter. Here's our mask information palette that we're familiar with by now. I'm going to take and use my free shape draw path tool and I'm just going to draw a random shape around these drums. Make sure to keep most of that head in there since we want to see the drumsticks hitting it. Okay, we've got our mask set up there. As you can see, the shape of it's right there. I'm going to click on my mask keyframe option down here. And as you can see, they all are turned on. I'm going to set a keyframe here. Now, before we go any farther, we need to make sure that the outside of our mask is opaque. As you can see over here on my output, it's still all there. So what do we want to do? We want to come back up to the outside portion of our mask filter. I'm going to run that down to zero. We now have the drums that they're playing and the wide shot. Well, we can't really see anything, so we need to do some more work on it. First thing I want to do is I'm going to come up here and mess with the inside of my filter and I'm going to dump the opacity down to about 65. That should give me a good amount of opacity there. All right, now we can see a little bit of the guys underneath playing the drums, and you can see the drumsticks on top beating on the drums. Okay, so let's make it a little bit prettier. Let's turn on our border, our edge. I'm going to set a pixel width of about two pixels. Nothing earth-shattering, but a little something to give it an edge. Next, I'm going to click on the soft edge again, and this time I'm going to make it really big. I'm going to make it like 80 pixels, kind of put a cloud around it. And I'm going to change the sides to both, so it's inside and outside. And now, as you can see, we've got this pretty cool little ghosted mask filter going on there with the drums playing in the close-up. But it's still not changing shapes. Next step I want to do is I'm going to slide my keyframe timeline cursor all the way down to the end click on the keyframe button as you can see it added a keyframe at the end but the end and the beginning are still the same so now all I need to do is come back up select which way I want to edit I'm going to use the edit shape I could have also used the A key to make it quicker and I'm just going to drag these control points for my vertices around a little bit and make my mask change shapes like I'm doing here nothing crazy it's going to look kind of like an amoeba morphing around on our screen. Okay, that's enough for there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the middle here and I'm going to pull some of these up a little bit and pull some of these down a little bit so it will give the impression that my amoeba mask, we'll call it that, has squished down and, is in it, and then is going to grow back into shape. Let's make these kind of come out a little bit to give it that squished look. Okay, so now if we were to scrub this, as you can see, it starts big, and it gets skinny, and then it grows back. And there you have it. If we click OK, 
Here we are back in the timeline. If I grab my cursor and scrub, you'll be able to see it change in shapes. Now remember, if you have a Grass Valley output card, you'll be seeing in real time on your full res HD output monitor this output. And remember, we have not rendered any of our clips on the timeline. We just dropped them in and worked in native clips in full res on our output monitor. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Join me again in a couple of weeks when I'll be talking about the new proxy mode editing function found in EDIUS version 6.